All right, so we're going to dig into this top 20 list. This is the 20 best 80s sitcoms ranked. Look at how young Kelsey Grammer is in that shot. Wow. Right? Look how fucking hot B. Arthur is. God damn it. Hey, fun fact. Rue McClanahan is our age when actually younger than us when she was cast. All right, why don't you wow. uh, keep your fucking fun facts to yourself? <laughs> Rue McClanahan was 45 when she was cast in that role. Okay, but she was not a good... That is not a good 45. Well, 45 wasn't all that great back then. Uh, that is also true. 45 well, was a good but, time in the 80s. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it was a great time for 80s sitcoms. You know, the top 80s sitcoms were iconic hits that they still were. hold up today, bringing laughter and and heart to viewers. From workplace humor to family dynamics... These sitcoms captured the essence of the decade. Whether you're looking for laughs alone or with the family, the 80s sitcom offers a time warp back to classic comedy. All right, so let's get into the let's get into the rankings. I'm not gonna read, read that fucking article. You guys see what I'm doing? Yeah, I, I, I also saw that you were dragging the cursor along like you were reading like your finger in a book. Do you, do you read with your finger? Why don't you fuck right off? <laughs> When you get to the top of Fuck Off Mountain, <laughs> you, you should walk your happy ass down the other fucking side of that motherfucker. <laughs> Keep going. All right. I well, never heard of this show. You never heard of One Day at a Time? No, I used to roll my cigarettes up in my sleeve like Snyder. It was, I thought that was the coolest fucking thing I feel anybody like I did. Yeah. That. yeah. But I saw it on one day at a time. Yeah, Snyder, um, and you know what, that's you know, Valley Bertinelli. This is how oh, fucked up we are. We thought Snyder was cool. Yeah, yeah, he that was. Mustache too. He's yes. Snyder was very very rapey. With that gave off and mustache. Yeah, he gave off like pornography out in the open type of guy. Like he probably oh, had it. He probably had a peephole looking at those girls. Creepy. Now. This chick uh, was having an affair with her dad. Yes. Ooh, and, and, and Phillips. Yeah. And Daughter of John Phillips and Michelle Phillips. And this was their TV sitcom mom. And she, the dad? There was no dad. She was a harlot. I mean, a single mom. The same. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, oh, in the seventies, I guess. <laughs> One day at hey, a time hey, was an eighties hey, family. What? If you bang your dad, do you call him dad or daddy? Both. Y you'd um, have to. One you'd day have at a time was an eighties family sitcom that followed a single mother moving her daughters to a new apartment where she raised them on her own and balanced her own career to provide for them and herself. The sitcom also featured the odd superintendent of their building, Schneider, who popped in on the family frequently to offer advice the series was rebooted in 2017 with new character was it yeah huh. this time wow. featuring a cuban-american family but with a similar premise and a new collection of likable one day at a time characters that showed sitcom last the shit comes lasting in oh jesus yeah i think yeah. the handyman I was schneiderito in that one. Oh, really no. now this was one of my one of my favorite shows yeah, I, I like. I like. I like man, this man. That's dude. I, that's Craig T. Nelson, baby. Craig oh, T. Motherfucking oh. Nelson from Parenthood. Yeah, and she's no, also from no. Coach. Craig T. Nelson from Coach. <laughs> he's also from Poltergeist. You can. That's acceptable too. Yeah. Yeah. He's that was Parenthood. a great. He was he's the dad in Parenthood, in, starring Dak Shepard. He was the dad in Polter. Okay, first of all, Parenthood starred uh, Craig T. Nelson <laughs> with Dak Shepard. Yeah. All right. Let's let's not get this fucking twisted, because Craig T. Nelson won an Emmy for his performance on Coach as the character of Hayden Fox, he the so head manly. coach of a university football team. The show had a lot of fun playing on the characters as the typical machismo male whose obsession with sports goes to ridiculous lengths. However, the leverage of the comedy, Fox had to find ways to bond with his elegant girlfriend Christine Armstrong and his young daughter Kelly with whom he had little in common. Who played Kelly? Together with pals Luther Van Dam. No, well, it's not Van Dam. Luther, Luther oh, Dilda. Right. He was, he was 
uh, dildo delivery van's brother. Right, but uh, together with Luther Dan Van Dam and Michael Dalbert Dubinsky, but Luther Van Dam was played by Jerry Van Dyke. Right, which is and why his, I got confused. Right, his brother is the lesbian dildo truck guy, Dick Van Dyke. Right. Dick Van, mm. Dick Van. Dyke. But uh, <laughs> we have oh, this. We I have was this, like, what are you saying? We have this at nineteen. <laughs> Uh, well, I feel like forward. it should be a lot higher than 19, but let's well, see what's 18. Oh, the Cosby show. show. The only reason this show is ranked 18th is because Bill Cosby is a rapist. Right. If Bill yep. Cosby, Bill America's dad, this would be, this would be number one hands fucking down. I will bet money that Golden Girls is number one. This is one of the biggest, first of all, it's, it's, it's a big family. Mm. Uh -huh. Then it's a big African American family with two successful parents. And they're like, doctors. Oh, nay. One's a like, doctor, was, one's a lawyer. There were just so many, so many different people to do a storyline with. It was like Le never Lisa Bonet. Oh. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. But um I mean the Cosby and it remains one of the best and most influential family friendly sitcoms ever made. We were at the doctor's office watching yep. this and I was like, what channel is this on? I think it was Bounce. But I think Roku has a channel just for the Cosby. So the Cosby's Cosby's is way too way too high. Wait, I know this show. Perfect Strangers was Don't be Perfect good. Strangers went from 86 to 93. Was this guy named Balki Bartakamus? Balki Bartakamus. I, I knew it had I a good. Run. I didn't know it ran into the. I didn't know it ran until ninety three. I didn't know it ran until ninety three either, because Perfect Strangers is a hilarious and timeless sitcom that made physical humor a major component of its delivery. Emmy nominee Bronson Pinchot portrayed the lovable Balki Bartakamus, a fish out of water foreigner from the remote island of Maipos who's decided to make it big in America. He ends up crashing with his cousin Larry, an aspiring journalist who tries to show Balky the ropes of American life. I remember this show, this and Alf we used to watch. Alf! Like Alf. They would come on one after the other. And then when okay. they started playing on the weekends, they started playing step by step, this show was lumped in with it. Yo. Now, now, Mama's uh, family. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go there. Perfect Strangers, the doorman, no, the 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 woman who ran the elevator at the office to Perfect Strangers was the wife uh, on Family Matters, and that spun off that oh. show. Okay, what spun so off that the show? The 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 elevator, the doorman was a door or woman, yeah. and it was um uh. Winslow, uh, Carl Winslow's wife. I can't remember her. Uh, yeah, Harriet Carl Winslow. Winslow was the cop. Right. But that's how yeah. those shows, that's how they introduced that show. Yeah, is because, because he the, was the doorman the for Perfect Strangers. Hang on. Wow. I love that. I never, I never knew that. that. That's definitely an interesting uh, aside for this. Mama's family... Uh, first of all, again, every one of these should be higher up on the list. You know what I loved about this show is it was uh, the on in the Poconos. I think this was the first show that featured the hot young girl. To me, at this point, all of these little shows always had regular frumpy looking motherfuckers and then one hot chick. Ari, is the woman on the right the hot young girl? All right, uh, that she was supposed to be hot. Yeah, right. She was. So she I and, vaguely. She wasn't the young girl. She was. She was supposed to be Vince's wife. She's supposed to be the eye kid. When you're looking at, when you're looking at Mama in the middle. So yeah, my left right. testicle's the hot one in comparison. Yeah, compared to everyone else, she's hot. That's what you gotta do is yeah. put yourself yeah. next to ugly people. Well, so you also yeah. listen. Have to like, I this looks familiar. I feel like. The woman in the middle was giving like sketch comedy because she was like dressed a little. Well, this is a spinoff. This is actually a spinoff 
of a sketch oh, that was okay, that from the Burnett show. Carol Burnett show. Oh, that's Vicky so that Lawrence. See, if I read this, you would know that. See, that's that's Vicky Lawrence's mama. In this photo, she's probably in her 30s. Uh, she started doing the mama character when she was in her 20s on the Carol Burnett show. And actually, one of my favorite Carol Burnett skits is a mama's family skit where they've got Tim Conway and he starts telling him about seeing Siamese elephants at the zoo. And it it because because it was sketch comedy, Tim Conway is an improv genius. He would just go completely off the rails and see how far he could take it. And they ended up leaving a lot of it in because he was just brilliant. But he started doing this elephant bit. And there's actually an outtake where Vicky Lawrence stays in the mama character and rips Tim Conway a new ass for being a little asshole. <laughs> So next up, number 15 is Alf. 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 It's another another one of your favorites there, babe. And yeah. there's some interesting stuff that's recently come out about Alf. Apparently, the dad absolutely hated being on the show. Yes, I remember reading that. He he didn't like he felt it was demoralizing to have to work with the puppet. And the guy who did the puppet would fuck with him constantly. <laughs> He would like talk to him between takes and like he would just ignore, be ignored, <laughs> but he would just continue to fuck with him. I mean, it was a funny is, show. Uh, he was always trying to eat the cat. I, I imagine there's got to be some hatred when the beanbag with a hand stuffed up his ass is more popular than, than you as the distinguished actor. Right. Like he went to, he went to acting school. He probably went to college. He looks like the type of dude that worked hard to get where, you know, yeah. He finally yeah. lands a sitcom and he's playing second fiddle to a, you know, uh, a mop. It was an interesting concept. It was a fun show. I remember watching it myself. It was a fun show. And I think that yeah, if he, you know, it went and, for four. I, I mean, how long could it have gone? You know what I mean? Four years is a long run for a show yeah. with a puppet in it. I yeah. I mean, he had to go home with it eventually. I really feel like this could have been higher up on the list. This could have been 17 or 18, in my opinion. Compared to the Cosby show, compared to Perfect Strangers, yeah. compared to, yeah. I mean, compared to what I've seen so far. This doesn't belong. This is too low on the list. Right. We, we, could, yeah. we could use this to push some of the other ones down. Right. And speaking of pushing down, the Cosby show. Oh, wait. <laughs> Who's the boss? Alyssa Milano. Be like number Alyssa. Six. It's at number 14. That's ridiculous. Now, see, I, I, would be, I would tend to agree with you. Eight years this show ran. That was we Tony watched Alyssa. We watched Alyssa Angela. Milano. Hey, Angela. We watched Melissa, Alyssa Milano grow up. Grow up. You know and what I mean? boy, did she grow up. Not for nothing, but for for us, it was kind of real time. Like we were watching it. We were kind of, she was actually, she's actually a little bit older than us. So it was perfectly legitimate for us to have crushes on her. Oh, yeah. You know? And then she went on Charmed and then showed off of the goods. And Oh, my God. Yeah. She had that. That thing that all the Disney girlies did after her. They like grow up and they're like, no, I'm sexual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those child stars like want to lash out because they're too. Good see them fun again. Yeah, dude. This is like looking through a yearbook or something. Yeah. We were watching a show recently that the grandma was not the grandma. Mona. 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 Ju no, the 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 lady was on a show. The Judith Light it plays a judge in yeah. uh, Law and Order. Oh, maybe that's every once thing. in a while she pops up on Law and Order. Yeah. Uh, the, sister, the sister from The Sopranos also was a judge judge on Law and Order. Growing Pains. Growing Pains. There's another show that I absolutely, I mean, you know, I love the show. Absolutely loved. Yeah, uh, it was a good one. Alan I thought, thought the chick was hot enough to, you know. Mm -hmm. Suzanne Summers. Tracy in that? Gold. No, this is no, yeah, Tracy Gold. You're talking about Tracy Gold. Yeah. Gold. Yep. This was the this was the first show that was my fantasy father-in-law that told me about cocaine. Yeah. Mm, yep. Remember that? Remember that special episode I where vaguely remember this? Where uh, wasn't that Boner? Boner. Boner. His name was Boner. I almost called him Booger. <laughs> Boner. Boner. Yeah. Is that Boner on the TV? Yeah. That was his name. They called him Boner, but like. 
the boner boat. used to mean uh like back in the 40s and shit a boner was somebody who screwed up a boner had a bonehead right oh so it was it was oh, more man. along he, those he really pulled a boner like he didn't he didn't walk around, he didn't walk around calling him hard on it was a uh, you know it wasn't erection family ties <laughs> um i don't know this show uh number 12 i mean i again i have to i i this is is this Michael J. Fox? Yeah. This is another one that ran for a long, long time. I remember sitting doing my homework, and you know how there's that part in there where Michael J. Fox like, and then like slides across the floor in his office yeah. chair. I remember doing that. To look at the answer, that's the one where he was on yeah. uh, diet pills. He got, yeah. he got diet pills from it from the fat girl right. who had a crush on. Right. Was it diet pills or was it the the caffeine pills so he could stay away? No. no, caffeine was saved by. No, the this was this was he got uh, diet pills. He got diet pills from the from the overweight girl that had a crush on him. See, this was he yeah. was when they actually did real diet pill stuff. Like that like was they, another mm -hmm. that was another very special because that was back when diet pills were just <laughs> meth. Yeah, um, still have diet pills, but. Yeah, but these uh, these were really just meth. <laughs> yeah, they were just they were just meth. That's all it was. It was diet? It was, it was falling out. Well, he wasn't on him. He wasn't on it that long. No, he, but he, uh, he just stayed on long enough to have methamphetamine psychosis. Now the thing is, as a child, it's weird. I had a crush on Meredith Baxter Bernie. Mm -hmm. Who did? Yeah, she was cute. You know, she was even then, got pregnant. Yeah, and then I I did realize that. Uh, my ex-wife bears a, a little bit of a resemblance to Meredith Baxter Bernie. So now I hate Meredith Baxter Bernie. I was going to say, uh, yeah. Huh? yeah, it's hard. Night Court. That was a good show. I love I, Night Court. I don't know what's, I don't know what's at the depths. I don't know what's at the depths of this uh, list, but it's gotta be great. If Night Court is number 11. Yeah, I, that oh, was a fantastic okay. show. I, I even do you remember the first season, the bailiff in the first season, the little old lady? Yes, he was, yeah. she, she fucking died. Selma, yeah. she Selma, she passed away, she but died. she was only smoking. Well, now we know why she died. I remember <laughs> the episode where they had the uh, the monkey that would talk, and at the very end of it, uh, he had a pencil and he broke it and he threw his arms up in the air. And he held up a voodoo doll, and then the and Harry ended up having to translate that. That breaking up is hard to do. That's uh, Family Ties. Uh, go back to it real quick because I just it just hit me. That song from Family Ties, not the theme song, but the What did you think I would do with this mother? Great song. That's where that song. That's the. That's where that song is from. That song had that had never existed before that show. Oh, but Night Court was uh, such a good. Now, Marky we haven't Pope. seen Wonder Years yet. Night Court was a spinoff, almost of Cheers, not quite, because uh, Harry Anderson used to do a Harry the Hat bit. He used to go into Cheers and like scam people with magic yeah. tricks. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so he kind of brought that character to Night Court to you know, and it's that, he's that almost was, the same. Well, that was Harry's. That was his shtick. He was a he was a stand up and a and a performer, and he did you know magic was one of his his shticks. He was. I didn't uh, realize that was a reprisal, technically. Yeah, and 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 he was actually pretty gifted as a as a performer interesting like he would he would always like if you look back into stuff before night court he always showed up as kind of a street rat magician who was trying to you know run a three card money scam on somebody or, or yeah pocket or you know that sort of thing all that sleight of hand stuff and then hang Mark on a second be, hang on hang on for one second because okay. We'll, uh, we'll just think about Marky Post while you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about think about Marky Post because
Pete is uh, joined us. He looks like he's gotten his ass kicked. Hey guys. Hey Pete. Hey man. Hey. New so wheel? we're uh, you're talking about eighties TV shows. We are at the half point point three's company. Ah, All right. Three okay. Company. That was a good one. And oh, I, yeah. I, I, I'm going to say that's probably middle of the roads, right where it belongs. Come and knock yeah. on our door. Knock on our door. Oddly enough, we sing the song to each other all the time. Yeah. And I was hoping you would sing it with me just now. No, but I don't no, you, just sing it. I'm just you decided not to back me up. And I really appreciate you that. You don't pay me enough to sing on the show. All right. So, so oddly uh, enough, two of the male leads here died of the aneurysm of the aorta. John Ritter. Oh, gee. And Alan Thick from from Growing Pains. Oh, that's wow. my father-in-law. They both died. incredibly they, rare. They they both died. That it's it's a it's called the Widowmaker. Uh, yeah. Only about a ten percent survival rate on that. Um, I just I just want to be the guy here to tell you that my dad's better than both of those guys because he's still with us. That's extreme. Not hey. only is it rare. I mean, you're looking at. Uh, at a, a 10% survival rate if you're in a hospital. Yeah. Like, well, not only that, the people around you have to understand what's going on. They have to understand that you don't need CPR because CPR makes it worse. Right. Like the, the odds, you just don't, you, it's, I, I don't know anyone that survived it. I, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, your story is the first person that I've heard of. Have to go Nico. I'll, I'll pick you up someday. You go meet my dad. <laughs> That's <laughs> and you can go meet him. We recently lost Bob Newhart, and no, coming oh, yeah. in number nine is Newhart. Yeah. Now this was uh, different from the Bob Newhart show because there was the Bob Newhart show. There was where he played a psychiatrist. This is Newhart, where he was an innkeeper in New England. Um, retired in, in Vermont. Never it. It You've never seen this? Yeah, and the fact that this is number nine and the Cosby show was number 19. Now, hang on a second. Blasphemous. And it's, all right. First of all, hi. You hi. don't, you might not know. Yeah, Larry's not in the picture, but his no, brother Daryl. No, that is Larry. That's Larry. His brother Daryl's in the picture, but his other brother Daryl is behind uh, the handyman. He was a famous comedian, he was somebody. The, the handyman guy? Tom Poston. The handyman guy. Yeah, yeah. Tom Poston. He was, a, he was an actor. This guy. Peter Scolari. That guy is, is like the quintessential like douchebag guy. He was. That's Peter Scolari. He was actually the other guy in Bosom Buddies with Tom Hanks. I know. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. At number eight. George and Wheezy. Moving on up. now, the Jeffersons. You know how you 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 enjoy watching how my mother watches old All in the Family, and I don't enjoy that. I actually and, that's torturous for me. You know how you enjoy watching her laugh at the most inappropriate times. And at it makes all in the leave. family. At all in the family, you guys. It's literally so embarrassing how funny she thinks Archie is. <laughs> well, he's supposed to be like funny. He was played funny. Mm -hmm. Carol yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's a different time. And he's actually uh, a racist asshole. Actually. That's the it's point of the show. That he's a racist asshole. Point. Yep. But the Have Jeffersons the was a, was Have a you spin off. Meet Sammy Davis? No, Sammy Davis Jr. kisses Carol O'Connor, Archie Bunker. It was it, it's a fantastic <laughs> clip. But uh, yeah, but George Jefferson is as racist against white people as as yes. Archie is racist against black people. And they and made them that, next to neighbors. <laughs> yeah, they made them neighbors until Jefferson's got an apartment on a, in a high rise. On the, and east, then the, on song, the east side. Beans don't burn in the kitchen. Beans don't burn on the grill. Took Hold a on, whole that's not, lot of moving up not just to get up that hill. Now we now are we up are in the big leagues, taking our turn at that. that. Okay, Long so listen, guys, the, this is actually a me, rap baby. song no, by Nelly and that. the Saint Lunatics, and no. so I don't know what you guys are doing. No, he, he borrowed that from this. I had, in many, many bands that I've been in, we used to play the Jefferson's Polka, where we played the Polka, we played Polka <laughs> and sang the Jefferson's theme song. So, That's fantastic. 
white folks. The whitest thing you've ever seen. I so wish we knew each other then. <laughs> yeah. Um so that it was a fantastic show. I think I think it's it's ranked well at eight. What was the show that Sherman Helmsley had? It was Amen. Amen. Yeah. In the nineties. Yep. Yeah, that was a good show too. That was that would come on after two two seven. Yes. Real quick, I did see a meme that said that Sherman's first show, like this this show, the was like over forty years old. Yeah. And so I just feel like it was like supposed to be like an inspiring thing. Like, listen, you can not be in anything and then turn 40 and then be on the And boom, you're fucking George Jefferson. Full House coming in at number seven. How you feel? Is Full House in eight? Oh, it started in 87. So I guess it is an 80s yeah. sitcom. And now you had to watch it in reruns, right? Stamos is Uncle Jeff. You- yeah, it wasn't. It's, yeah. it's still it's still in reruns. That, yeah. that show is still being played Finally. today. And my uh, brother plays this show for the babies. Dude, first of all, John Stamos, Ugh. hot as fuck. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. And then he's um, only about as tall as I am. He's what really? white people say tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah, he's short, dark, and handsome. He's only about my height. I he, did not know that. Yeah, oh, they when they shot him on that show, he was often wearing uh lift shoes. And often on an apple crate if he was if he was around the other the other guys. Oh, it's that Tom Cruise treatment. Got it. Because Dave mm-hmm. Coulier and Bob Saget were both tall. Yeah. Like and Saget her. was like in, was like kind of Saget really, was yeah really tall. Number six is Roseanne. I know everybody watched this show. I know that it was like watching you, your own family on the television. Yeah, it's it's almost like you were looking into a mirror. You know yeah, what like, I mean? Or you were looking into an alternate universe where your family was. The point was, yeah. she wanted to break the rules. She didn't want to be the perfect sitcom family. She wanted to leave the warts on and and show it, and it worked. I mean, it it really resonated with everybody. Yeah. You know, it was okay. The sitcom for- tackled serious issues such as abusive households and clinical depression, because everybody was abusive to each other, and everybody was clinically depressed. And now this show was weird to me because. When you so you had so there first off there weren't a lot of of black families in sitcoms, right. and so mm-hmm. one of the few black families that they had in sitcoms at this time that ran about the same time as this did was the Cosby Show, uh-huh. and so the Cosby Show had these financially successful, well-adjusted families. Mm-hmm. Yes, they had their issues, but it was just presented in a higher cultured uh, way. Yes, And so mm-hmm. at least to the way that a lot of black people around me felt was that Roseanne gave this trailer trash vision of white people against the Cosby showing this mm-hmm. upper class falutin black folk. And it was this weird, it kind of puts you in a, in kind of a fucked up headspace. Hey, you're like, because real white, real white people don't act like that, right? <laughs> but we do. <laughs> so yeah, it was well, very was odd. Very to much see exactly that. how white people are. Still, I feel, you know, not much has changed. I mean, there's also the same white people. What was the show that Jason Bateman was on? Like, there's that version of white people. Let's see what's coming up. We're in the top five, guys. Taxi. Oh my God, Chris Tomlin, fucking genius. Maddie wow. Rockdeff, I would say, is ten percent. Christopher Lloyd, 10% Danny DeVito, and maybe 10% Andy Kaufman. And, Andy Kaufman. I, I got to tell you, I fucking hated Andy Kaufman with a passion. Wow. Oh, no, and I, I love was, Andy. I loved Andy. I was so happy when uh, he got into that feud with uh, nice. Jerry Lawler. That was all set up. It was, but I was very happy to see it. Because yeah, at that no, time, he used to, wrestling was know, still real you know, to me. You know Andy Kaufman? Which guy is he in the picture? He's this guy. And he played, and he was Latka. He was an immigrant who didn't know how to speak English very well. But he was a comedian. He was kind of a surrealist. Mm-hmm. His version of funny was only funny to him. Oh, like you. Yeah. That's why I say I'm like 10% Andy Actually, Kaufman. Even worse, he because didn't, didn't he have a heart attack on stage and everybody, <laughs> everybody just watched him die? Right, because everyone I, thought he was no, doing a, a he, bit. No, he died of cancer. He no. died of cancer. Did he? 
I think I think he had a heart attack on stage. I don't think he died from yes, it, but he, I think I he had a heart attack. I don't attack. think he died from it, but yeah. But he but used to, he used to play because they thought it was a bit. He used to dress up like a completely separate guy who was a friend of Andy Kaufman. He would show up for interviews dressed as, as this other guy and be a complete asshole. I forget the guy's name. Oh, so he's like mm -hmm. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell and, learned everything he knows from Andy Kaufman. Yeah, and, and Andy so Kaufman my, was the true surrealist. My introduction to Andy Kaufman was when he did the seven minute "Here I Come to Save the Day" yes. bit. Mm -hmm. That was and I I did I synced the Mighty Mouse theme song. So, but he yeah, only so did you can that see where one. I, I, <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I just and then he became was, he wrestled women. He was the yeah. WWF intergender champion, and he'd only wrestled women. Yep, he only wrestled women, but he kept talking shit to Jerry Lawler. Yeah. Jerry Lawler was a big wrestler. Jerry, the, he was yeah. an announcer when you knew yeah, him. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But he used to be. A, he was a, a big bruiser, he violent. Was like yeah, he was three hundred and sixty pounds. So he would go. So Andy Kaufman would talk a bunch of shit. He'd go fight three hundred and sixty pound women and beat the shit out of them. <laughs> and th there's so much genius with with Taxi because Danny DeVito was never supposed to be out of that cage. In fact, I think he no, was this show was so he was originally written as a disembodied voice. Like it, <laughs> the character was supposed to be a throwaway, but they couldn't get rid of him because he leaned into it so hard. And are you guys ready for number four? Family matters. Ah, uh, family matters. Yeah, there it is. Oh yes. my god, yes. Family matters. Everybody's number four. I think it sounds Family like train. I think it sounds like both Dre and Erica agree mm -hmm. that number four is a good slot for yeah. Family Matters. Um, I wasn't I sure feel like that it, it wasn't going to be. Yeah, I, I think if Bill Cosby didn't do a Bill Cosby, then that would have been ranked uh -huh. here. Yeah. Because yeah. like this yeah. show, this was a, a, a well adjusted loving family. So like in my head, I'm thinking. There has to have been other shows like Cheers hasn't been on yet. Funny, there are other it? shows that are probably better than this one, but I do feel like this one ran for a long time. It was very popular. There's yep. a lot of like Urkel and wearing your pants high and saying "God need cheese." And did I do that? Like I want to call an asterisk. I would not refer to Family Matters as an '80s sitcom. It right. started in '89. But that's you know for it to be an '80s sitcom, yeah. it, I feel like it should. Re it does. Right. It does do its job by reflecting the time in which it sat. It did reflect 1989 in 1989. It did reflect 1990 right. in 1990. But well, I you also have to remember. Story. You have to remember, Family Matters started with Perfect Strangers. Right. 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 Yeah. So that's part okay, of why right. this is still it's rooted in. And, right. It's. Right. It's rooted much earlier in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And fun you. fact, Jaleel White, Urkel, recently donned the Urkel gear a few weeks ago because he teamed up with Snoop Dogg to introduce so a new weird. line of, of cannabis. Wow. Yep. Oh, my gosh. I want some Urkel. Uh, weed. Urkel we watch it's this called, show. I think it's called Urkel's Purple. Oh, All right, number three, Mar oh. Married with Children. Uh, 1987 to 1997, a full 10 years. Oh, I think when you look at when you look at TV dads, Al Bundy was the best one we had. <laughs> right? He's definitely the one that didn't get in trouble. I mean, he just I we just recently watched an episode, I think, and it mm -hmm. was just so mean. Like he's so like mm -hmm. like forgot, like he's a forgetter, he wants no responsibility. Like, obviously, I don't like that, but I do remember as a kid, like, thinking the show was, like, a funny show to watch, and, like, I, like, there was something about Hit the Road Jack, I vaguely remember. I remember thinking that Kelly was really pretty, um, mm. but I personally, 2024, love this show because that's what my logo is based on for my podcast. And three of the four people in that picture still yeah. have careers. And, and honestly... They could have fallen the way of Urkel, but uh, they didn't. They they all managed to reinvent themselves. I mean, Ed O'Neill's a friggin' genius. Mm -hmm. 
and a, a highly skilled uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I think, but I think Ed O'Neill is not for nothing. It's the same character in Modern Family. It's just moderner. Yeah, he just grew up a whole lot. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It seems to me he's a little bit more successful. Yeah, it's kind of you know, it, but it's it's all it's the same personality. Yeah, and it's that that type of personality. It's where you know Al Bundy didn't learn anything. Right. Where in the other, you know, he he's learned a lot, or he, and he's learned. And his as wife is even hotter than Katie Seagal. Even hotter, which is hard to do because Katie Seagal is a fucking stone cold fox. That's a yeah. that even, hot, Katie Seagal was a nice yeah. piece even then. To this day, so, you remember her in Smart House, or is that too young? Ah, uh, and there's old. Golden Girls. Oh, number two, are. the Golden Girls. No. That means Cheers is number one. You could spank for a half an hour from 1985 to 1992. What on earth? Do these biddies? Be you know how hot they are? God damn. Room of that. I can't I, I can't I can't accept Cheers as number one. I mean, I don't think it's number one, but like But what's left? I... People do love that shit. I have a hold on. All Before right. we scroll so to number think, one, what do we think? Uh, I would have put Cosby Show as number one, but now I can't. I don't think there's anything. Did we already do? Growing pains already went. Um, oh no, no, no! Facts of life. You can't. You, you can't take the good. Back. You take the bad. You take them both. You take them both. There. No. It's, uh, facts oh. of life or uh, different strokes. Different strokes and with the oh, maybe. I was going to say that the rich guy with the two kids. Different strokes could. That's definitely a contender. Different. I think like I feel like Different Strokes is an '80s sitcom. Definitely an '80s or a '70s sitcom. sitcom. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. A '76. I think it's a '70s sitcom. All right. Hold on. What else is there? Um, Laverne and Shirley. '70s. Oh. Yeah, that started. that was definitely '70s. Yeah, started in the '70s. Happy know, with Happy Days. All the shows I've ever watched on Nick at Night. All right. Leave it nah. the Beaver. Nah, Beaver Pete, was- you got a guess? You're talking. I can't hear you, Pete. Don't. Nope. All right. Here Number we go. One. Number one. Cheers from 1982 to 1983. 1995. Fuck this. Fuck this whole list. I'll flip a table. Dude. Yeah. Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. John Ratzenberger. Fucking Ted Danson. George Wendt. Uh, George Wendt. Harrelson. Fucking Woody yeah. Harrelson. This okay, guy, I will, I, I will take Kirstie Alley, but when she, after she thickened up a bit, I would take Kirstie Alley. <laughs> Kelly Long, Nicholas Calisatro, Rhea Perlman, Rhea Perlman, George Wendt, John Ratzenberger, Kelsey Grammer, Kirstie oh, Alley. I don't know about Baby Newworth. Who the fuck is Baby Newworth? Is that Baby Newworth? She played uh, Frazier's wife. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, Lilith. She is Lilith. hot. God damn it. He's on um, Chicago Fire. A lot of people don't realize this. Danson was wearing a hairpiece as Sam Malone. How oh, really? He's always wearing a hairpiece. Yeah, he's because, bald as fuck. Because he he had he had hair loss issues even then. Oh wow. shit! Yeah. He's still wearing a hairpiece. Just just white now. No wonder his hair looked absolutely perfect all those years. How about it that? It was a piece. So I mean that good. is that is Screen Rant's top twenty. I I don't know. I mean, I feel like you know the top five is solid, but with the exception of Cosby. Yeah, I, I I feel like that got downvoted because of yeah no Cosby Co- Cosby's been. only only as high as it is because right and I I don't know if you would swap Family Matters and Cosby because no, sixteen no, no, is no, no, you know no, no, still no. really like but. Yeah, if Cosby were down in the top five, Cosby, you know, maybe Family Matters would have been in this right. number six. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I mean, Family Matters, yeah. I feel like it was somewhere in the top ten. Right. Yeah, just right. because I just feel like pop culture wise, like people are still, or at least millennials, are still quoting the show. 